So I've decided to go ahead and work on a grid journal today um, in my art journal book. I started by using a square business card, uh, an old business card that I have, and um, just drew out my squares are super messy, not precise at all. In fact, some of them um, went off the far right edge <clears throat> a little bit, but no worries. It's just a way of kind of mapping things into little squares. Um, again, I just grabbed my Stabilo, uh, my Stabilo all water soluble pencil and made some random marks on 12 grids. I decided I wasn't going to, uh, boxes for the grid, I mean, I decided I wasn't going to do a 24 grid spread. Um, <clears throat> uh, I did have someone in the studio with me at the time, so you might see me gesture with my hands or stop or um, uh you might figure out that there is another person in the in the studio with me, but maybe not. Um, the next move here is grabbing a water soluble crayon. I believe these are from the Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks selection, and I think that's kind of like a hot pink color. And I just continued on with random mark, mark making, but I could feel myself wanting to bring in um, paint. Uh, doesn't take me very long. And I also considered um, bringing in collage. Uh, more than once I thought about bringing in collage, but did not um, due to the fact that I had to kind of dig around to find some collage pieces and I didn't want to waste video time doing that. So the next time I do one of these, I'll have some of my matte gel medium and my collage pieces ready beforehand so I don't have to waste video time searching for um, the right pieces of collage. Um, and then interestingly, what happened right here on my third block, I picked up some of that yellow ochre paint and because my pencil's water soluble, um, and it's not sealed at all, it turned the yellow ochre into an olive color. <clears throat> it mixed the black with the yellow, and it made this olive green color. So I made the decision after the first time that that happened. I guess I'm bringing in olive green <laughs> as well as... Um, as well as the uh, yellow. I do eventually come back to the pure yellow, but I kind of got a little bit sidetracked by this um, olive showing up. So you can see that I'm, I'm not really even rinsing my brush. Um, I'm allowing this yellow to become muddled a little by these black marks and... Uh, going ahead and embracing that olive color. And after it's all said and done, I really do like um, the fact that that color was even accidentally brought in. It's a color I wasn't expecting, but I like it. It's cohesive <clears throat> because it was it came from the yellow and the black together. So I'm just continuing to randomly put marks and fill in spots that <clears throat> not really giving it any thought. Um, the only thing I do think about is I, I try not to make them all look alike. They look related, but not alike. So um, there's no identical square, but they do look like they're from the same family because obviously I'm using the same color color scheme on all of them. Um, some of the paint is thicker in some of the blocks than in others. Um, 
But I think at this point I went ahead and mixed up some olive on my palette. I'm pretty sure I did. It's a dark olive. Um, I used Payne's Gray and Yellow Ochre on my palette to make a comparable olive color to the accidental olive I got in the beginning. And um, I'm moving pretty fast because I'm having a conversation with someone at the time that I'm painting this. And they are also painting a grid journal. Um, so, and um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of moving along here. And uh, kind of seeing what, what might happen. I think at this point, I was trying to decide whether or not I was going to use any collage pieces. Uh, and I stepped away from my chair for a couple of seconds and was fiddling, faddling around and looking in the box and trying to decide if I was going to glue anything down. Um, and then I, and I kind of forgot that I was recording and then I came back. So um, I apologize for the little um, pause in the middle of this. Let's see. Come back, Lisa, come back. And I think that's only just for a minute. And then... Um, yeah, then I'm coming back, sitting back down, figuring out what I'm going to do next. Um, so I decide not to do the collage, which I think the next time I um, have someone in my studio, I think we will do some collage, but I will pre-pair all the pieces and I will um, have all the choices like in a little basket so that we can choose what we want to use. I think I would have liked to have brought in some um, black and white pieces um, or maybe some bold red, uh, but that didn't happen on this one. Um, you know, like I said, each day is uh, kind of a um, free period of um, painting for me before I get into any big work. And um, this is what I considered my warm-up. Um, some days it's just literally scribbling. And other days I'm actually painting something. Um, some days I'm writing furiously in a journal. And then I cover it all up. But um, I do enjoy the grid journals. I think I find out um, some interesting things by blending colors and trying techniques and um, repeating patterns um, and color combinations. That's the other thing. I get in a trap of um, using the same colors. I don't know if you guys are like that, but I get in a trap of using the same colors over and over and over. And I don't know that I've ever used um, the hot pink color, the the you know that bold hot rose color next to olive and yellow ochre I don't know that I ever have in a painting um so I find that process interesting the the color combination part of it um because it's a consistent um it's a consistent uh color combination all the way across all 12 squares and so um I do like that that um I don't know there's something about grid journaling that makes me happy so let's see what I do from here I feel like it's not going to be very long before I chose to bring in uh, a cooler uh, a cooler color so you're going to see that here in just a minute um, I brought in a crayon that is a, I believe, that is a wax pastel. 
and I started scribbling over the, uh, some of the parts of the boxes here. And wax pa pastels do blend well with acrylics. Usually I try to use them towards the end of a piece. I'm approximately halfway through this, this piece. Um, and then I bring in a, a more orange color here, which um, I do quite like it with the pink. And it makes me want to explore orange and pink together uh, again. Um, so, yeah, I do like the orange with the pink. And it's interesting. If I made an, a color, if I mixed a color that was a dark olive, um, I think I could use it as my dark in a painting and really do something interesting, especially because I'm interested now in like abstract landscape. And I think I want to play some more with some of that olive color. So I brought the Stabilo back in, the Stabilo All pencil, and I got the tip wet and then I started um, drawing with it. And it really makes a difference in how it, the intensity of the black mark is when you get that, the tip of it wet, um, it really makes a bold line. Hands down, my favorite um, mark making tool is the Stabilo Owl Pencil, 100%. I feel like I could just doodle with that all day. It's a, it's a great, great tool. I'd say it's a great tool for mixed media. It's a great tool for um, painting, get yourself some water soluble Stabilo All pencils. I actually have a basket full of them and they're in different stages of wear and tear. Um, but I feel like I can't be without them now. And I, by them, I mean multiples of them. I can't seem to be without multiples of that um, pencil. All right, so what am I going to do next? Mm, I stopped for a second. Let's see what I'm going to do. I must be looking for paint or, um, yeah, trying to figure out what I'm going to do next or pouring some paint out. I feel like I like stopped there for a second. Maybe I was deep in conversation. Who knows? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I'm not unhappy with this exactly how it is right here. Uh, now that I'm looking at it and going through it with you. I'm really not unhappy with how it looks. Um, the one square where I, I fill in, you know, the third square down on the left side where I fill in almost all of it, I really like that because it looks like a wash of like almost like watercolor. Um, so that's an interesting thing to think of. I might do a grid journal where I start with a wash of color on a page. So each of the squares are, you know, like a pale pink or a pale blue or um, something like that. So anyway, I'm horsing around doing something, but here I come with um, a pale green, a gray green celadon color. And uh, I will always give the shout out to Jackie Schomburg Minen for um, showing on her um, YouTube the versatility and uh, beauty of the color Celadon. <laughs> 100% give her the credit. Because I had that color in my arsenal. I just didn't know how powerful it was um, as a neutral. I think I always just looked at it as, a, as, as green. I didn't really like process it 
as um, a great neutral to pair with all these other colors. And it really does. The only color I haven't liked it paired with was, um, I saw it paired today with um, a purple. And it completely washed out the celadon and made the celadon look gray and bleh. I didn't like it. So that was an interesting discovery. But next to warm colors, it is delightful. I really like it next to hot pink. I love it next to um, red. Um, and it works well with black and white. So, yeah. Get you some. I would say that Titan Green Pale is another choice, although it's quite a bit lighter than this green gray. This green gray is a Liquitex brand. Um, and then there's a couple that are um, Blick paints, Blick brand paints, that um, are very close match for some of these other greens. So I'm kind of using three different greens in this um, shade. I'm using uh, the Liquitex and the Blick, I believe, the most here. And then I think I do use some golden Titan Green Pale. I think I do. But anyway, yeah. So, you can see that adding that cool color over... Um, these warm colors is kind of a game changer. Um, it does change things up and it, um, I don't know. I, I do like this page, but I, I still like the grid journals that have collage in them. Um, so my next grid journal page will probably have collage, but I need to be, if I'm taping, I need to be better prepared. Now I'm just repeating myself. So yeah, I'm just continuing to fill in. And I am having a conversation while I'm painting, so I'm just very mindlessly applying paint um, while I'm talking and not really thinking about what I'm doing. That's one of my favorite ways to to paint is to just have a journal open in front of me like an art journal or a page that I'm not really that I don't really have a focus about um and just visiting talking and putting color down on the page I'd love that um I love to just mindlessly have a conversation with somebody be focusing on that conversation and then see what happens when I create uh, something while talking. It's fun. All right. And I didn't speed this up at all. This is in real time. Um, so approximately 20 minutes. I'd say that it took a little bit longer than my normal morning warm-up. But my normal morning wasn't normal because I had um, company over. So I had a fellow artist come over and join me for a few hours of playtime in the studio, which is really fun. And we're going to do it uh, more often. We planned already next week to do it again. And um, we'll see what we can come up with between now and then. I don't know what we're going to do next or if it's going to be anything structured or if it's just going to be, you know, like talking and painting. I sure like repeat marks, don't I? But, you know, when I sit and look at this, <clears throat> I really love it. <laughs> I really love it. There's something about the eye candy. If you just hold that back and glance at the colors and the way it kind of all works together as one big painting, but yet 
not, it's just so fun. Oh my gosh. I do love it. Whoever thought of grid journaling is, is a genius because it's so therapeutic. I can't even tell you guys how, um, how therapeutic it feels to work on one of these and then sit back and look at it afterwards and be like, I did that. It's very therapeutic for me. All right. So now the tool that I have in my hand there is um, willow charcoal. It's very thin, very fragile, but it leaves a really nice uh, mark. I'm probably going to have to seal up this page uh, because it's real, almost like a dusty. It's a real lightweight, real lightweight um, charcoal. So then I grabbed a um, pastel crayon. And you see, you can tell I keep trying to bring in the black. If I had some little...